Welcome everybody, my name is Rusty Pop. I'm a real estate agent here in the Silicon Valley and welcome to the show, Real Estate with Rusty. I'd like to introduce the show here to you. This is a new weekly show that we're gonna be doing and what we're hoping to provide to the viewership here at a &B is some education around the idea of real estate, whether you're a new homeowner, whether you're an, a homeowner that is aspiring to sell your house, an investor, or just interested in real estate like a lot of us are here in the Silicon Valley. I'd like to provide some value and education for you. So, as I said, my name is Rusty Pop. I am a realtor here in the Silicon Valley. I've been selling real estate in San Jose, Santa Clara County, um, and the surrounding areas of the Bay Area for about 16 and a half years. Um, I started in the business actually when I was 19 years old, and at that time, you know, real estate was very different than it is today, and I've definitely had the opportunity to learn and, and grow in my knowledge base, and I'm hoping to share that with you on a regular basis here. Um, I'd like to also introduce you to my co-host here, Danielle Valley. And Danielle, why don't you give us a little brief background about how you got to the real estate business? Thank you, Rusty. Uh, so um, I also, I grew up in the South Bay and um, I, I'm actually fourth generation um, real estate investor and realtor. Um, my great grandmother um, used to build homes uh, on her summers off from teaching in Oregon. Um, oh, wow. Mm -hmm, yeah, and uh, my grandfather was a builder. My father was a builder and my mother's been a real estate agent for over 24 years. So you could say I grew up with contracts and blueprints all around the house. <laughs> and of you know, <laughs> on weekends I would help my mom. And um, so I've been around it for a really long time and um, I have many other passions, including art, health and wellness, but um, real estate's always been in the background and now it's definitely in the foreground, so. It's great to have you here and, and you know, we definitely share that, you know, being interested in art as well as in real estate. And I think they do tie mm -hmm. together which is great for what we're gonna talk about today because we're gonna describe really what it takes to get top dollar for a home in the Silicon Valley's real estate market. Um, and artistic ability can actually <laughs> play into that in some ways. Uh, um, so thanks for sharing that. You know, As I mentioned, we'd like to provide some information on a weekly basis and it's gonna range everything from real estate investing. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about what it takes to prepare a home for sale and to get top dollar. Uh, some tactics that people can use when they're trying to purchase homes to get the best possible price, get the best possible terms of, of a sale, and um, most importantly, be successful in this real estate market, which can definitely be challenging at times. I'm yeah. sure that you can attest to that as well. When it comes to selling a home, most homeowners want to know they're working with the best realtor to maximize their sales price. If receiving the highest possible price for your largest investment is the goal, then hiring the right agent matters. Hi, I'm Rusty Pop with Intero Real Estate Services and I'm really excited to have the honor of presenting this property. Rusty Pop of Intero Real Estate Services provides superior knowledge of real estate market trends as an extremely active agent in San Jose and the Silicon Valley with a track record of selling throughout the Bay Area. Specializing in three keys to getting the top dollar, preparation, presentation, and promotion, Pop Properties has a custom marketing plan for you. Rusty and his team offer a concierge service to get your house on the market and looking its best. We take care of all the details to make sure your home shines to attract the maximum number of buyers and combined with our worldwide global marketing strategy, we ensure the maximum competition for your home. When buyers compete, sellers win. Specific services offered include a concierge coordination of repairs, cleaning, storage, high-end and extensive marketing, and professional custom staging designed specifically for your home. We can even coordinate a full remodel of your house for you. Staging, high-end, state-of-the-art photography, a lifestyle video, and global marketing all come free when you list your home with Rusty Pop. If you're looking to list your home or simply want to discuss its value in today's market, don't hesitate to call 650-793-9575. So as I said, I've been in the real estate industry here in the Silicon Valley for a little over 16 years, and I've definitely seen you know, the market change, I've seen what works and what doesn't work also change over time. And uh, as of right now, you know, we're definitely in a market where 
sellers really can take advantage of some very incredibly high prices as compared to what they've been in the past. Mm -hmm. They've uh, appreciated, homes that is, have appreciated in the Silicon Valley, you know, anywhere from 20 to 40 percent uh, just in the last, you know, 18 months um, in some areas. Yeah. Uh, some areas has been less appreciation than that, where, while others have actually exceeded that. So it's a pretty incredible time. Um, and one of the main things that we hear all the time is how does a seller take advantage of a market like this, right? And um, mm -hmm. so we wanted to provide some tips and give you guys some information about what we think is actually the most important way to uh, maximize the sale price of your home and at the end of the day maximize the net profit in your pocket if you're thinking about selling. So each week we're going to be discussing one or two topics about real estate. Again, there can definitely be a wide range of different things that real estate, you know, we could talk about mm -hmm. to infinity really and hopefully uh, we'll keep it a little bit fun. We're going to go off site at times, take a look at properties, take a look at what sellers can do, what homeowners can do to ensure that the investment that they're putting into their homes will pay off if they ever decide to sell. In addition, we're also going to be bringing in different guests from time to time. These mm -hmm. guests will range from other players in the real estate industry. We're going to be talking to other agents that do very well, uh, helping out clients, and we're going to be interviewing stagers, uh, contractors that help with remodeling and the like. We're also going to be talking about, um, or with rather, lenders and escrow officers to make the whole process easier for you know, a homeowner uh, to understand so that they can get through the process in, in a better way, or just really just for your own knowledge base. So for today, uh, we're going to try to introduce the best ways that a seller can maximize the sale price on their house essentially getting top dollar for their investment. Uh, what we find is that in most cases, I think you probably agree, is that mm -hmm. most people's home that they live in is their number one largest asset that they own. So it's obviously the very most important thing for them to make sure that when they do sell it, that they're maximizing that asset. Maybe they're going to be retiring and moving on to the next phase of their life and they need every single dollar to make sure that, they're, that their lifestyle is comfortable in the next phase. Uh, some people are moving up or moving out of the area uh, or downsizing. All of these really definitely equal that they need the most dollars at mm -hmm. the end of the day. And so there's a lot of things that a seller can do, some expensive and some inexpensive, that can ensure that you get the highest possible price and, and ideally in the shortest amount of time possible as well. So what I've developed is sort of a framework around that that I call the three P's of selling for top dollar. And those three P's stand for preparation, presentation, and also promotion. So I'd like to kind of break down what all three of those P's mean individually. Um, the preparation phase is very, very important. Uh, what I'd like to point out before even going into that is the reason this is so important is because here in the Bay Area, and the Silicon Valley specifically, you know, our buyers really do come from all over the world. They come from everywhere in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have people that relocate here for our high-tech jobs that come from all over the globe, really. And some of them actually purchase homes sight unseen. Some of them come mm -hmm. out specifically for one weekend or two weekends just to look at homes. That's You've right. seen that. Yep. And as a result, their, their first impression of a home is always online. Uh, there's statistics that National Association of Realtors has put out that says that something like 81% of home buyers start out online, but I think here in the Silicon Valley <laughs> it's 101%. So, Agreed. <laughs> you know, so I think that you know, it's super important that the, the way that a house is, is, is shown online is going to be one of the driving forces to make sure that people show up to those open houses and, and actually take a look at that house. And then once all those people come in, that is what creates the competition and the competition is what drives up the price. Mm -hmm. So there's a step-by-step -step process that, that a seller can employ to make sure that that happens. I think the most important start with that is preparation. Uh, one of the things that I find very important in preparation is depersonalizing a house. Mm -hmm. We all definitely have things in our homes that we value very highly. Some of them are sentimental, some of them are religious, some of them are based on our cultures. Uh, some of them are based on just what we like, yep. you know, and, and the truth of the matter is is that not everybody likes the same thing, yeah. you know, and so Best we'll, to create neutrality so that you can step in and envision your own home. Yeah, exactly. You want buyers to envision the home as theirs, mm -hmm. not as yours, and so you want to mentally move them in, and the best way to do that is to eliminate distractions. Correct. So we, we'd like to take as much of those personal items away from it and try to create a blank slate so that the buyers don't get fixated on things that don't matter. 
a good example of this is a house can be completely 100% dialed in, remodeled, mm -hmm. you know, in the most nicest modern way possible. Mm -hmm. And if throughout that house there are distractions such as, like I said, personal items that are going to, you know, start conversations or catch somebody's eye, they're not looking at the house anymore. They're looking at those items, and that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. Exactly. So depersonalizing the home is, is a very huge, you know, start to the process. Once we do that. Um, you know, we recommend also that you know we clean the house uh, professionally. Mm -hmm. Everybody's home is, is there's different levels of, um, of of maintenance that have been done on homes, yeah. and 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 we want to get them. You know, any home that we're selling, we want to get it up to that that top level that we possibly can. So mm -hmm. house cleaning is very very important. That includes window cleaning. Yep. Um, because window washing, uh, you'd be surprised how many times you look on the MLS and you can see these great photos. They're, they're high definition photos. <laughs> and with, with high definition photos, you can actually see the spots in the windows and the dust in the pane. And That's so right. when you have that sort of a thing, again, it's a distraction that, that we want to avoid. Uh, similarly, landscaping the front of the house, mm -hmm. you know, basically cleaning out you know what you know what we what we may find is the most beautiful garden to us may not be you know the same thing to a buyer and so keeping things as neutral and and causing that curb appeal to be more of a vanilla sort but mm -hmm. at the same time memorable yeah. um, is super important so once we've kind of depersonalized the house you know we always recommend also that we go through and eliminate any of the distractions that might be eliminated or fixed with just easy repairs mm -hmm. that might be touch up paint uh, it might be repairing, you know, door handles that don't work or hinges on doors that have been painted over. Yeah, uh, switching out light switch cases and... Absolutely, yeah. And One of the things that I almost do on every home I sell <laughs> is actually change all of the light switches and outlets to the more modern kind mm -hmm. because it's this little touch that, that actually people notice. Yep. Uh, in addition to that, you know, like you said, light fixtures, mm -hmm. door handles, uh, and, and little things like that that you know, a handyman can do all of this work in a day, maybe two, um, depending on how extensively you want to take it. Yep. Um, and, you know, it, it actually adds up to dollars at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, so we go ahead and, and, and recommend that sellers do that. Uh, and that's the next, or the next part of the preparation. And then finally, what a lot of times we do is we either use a mix of the homeowner's furniture and also staging furniture, mm -hmm. or in many cases, the homeowners will have already moved out and the home will be completely vacated, in which case all of the furniture that will be presented to the market uh, will be staging furniture, mm -hmm. uh, which you have a, a little bit of a background <laughs> in, in interior design, so yeah. definitely add a lot of value there. Um, and so what we're trying to do there is make a home look inviting. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make a home look lived in, but not really lived in. Yes. And, <laughs> and so it's, it's definitely the type of furniture that all matches, mm -hmm. all the colors match throughout. There's a theme basically throughout the whole house of color schemes, style, and and what's actually in style today. Because yeah. obviously, furniture is very expensive. So a lot of homeowners will have very very expensive furniture mm -hmm. that might be 20 years old because it takes, you know, it, it's very expensive to replace. Yeah. Uh, or they have a lot of mixed furniture, mm -hmm. and and again. We all have our different styles. What we're trying to cater to is the masses. Yeah, so it's totally right. different than, than what we would like in our own home. In fact, if you went to my house, the stager would probably want to take everything out and restage <laughs> my house too, right? I'm sure yours is the same. Yep. <laughs> so That's right. in any event, you know, we would like to you know, go through the staging process. Sometimes we use a mix of the owner's furniture and the stager's furniture. Sometimes uh, we use mostly staging furniture. And then mm -hmm. again, sometimes we use all the stager's furniture and the house will end up looking like a model home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's really, you know, the, the typical process for presenting your home, or rather preparing your home. And we're preparing it for the right presentation. So that that's leads right. us to the second P of the three, which is presentation. Um, how your home looks online, as I said at the beginning, is so important because everybody's going to be looking online. They're going to look at the photography. They're going to mm -hmm. look at the pictures of the home. And they're going to make a decision whether they're going to literally fly here from perhaps China yeah. or from New York City or from Florida or, or drive across the street. And whether they're going to do that or not might have a lot to do with those pictures. And so we've done all that work on the preparation side to make mm -hmm. sure that those photos look really good. Mm -hmm. So taking them with an iPhone doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> right? It's really important that that as a homeowner that's selling their home, that you hire an agent that is going to ensure you 
that the photography is going to be professional. Mm -hmm. This was not the case 10 years ago. It was absolutely um, not the norm to have professional photographers yeah. 10 years ago. But now, uh, I would say more than 50%, maybe even more than 75% of homes are presented this way. Um, and the 25% that aren't, they don't sell for as high. I mean, yep. It's just a fact. And uh, I don't think people really realize that. No. You know? Uh, in, any, in, in any case, the, the pictures that we recommend are going to be HDR, HDR photography. Mm -hmm. HDR photography basically means that a photographer is going to use his very high-end camera to take nine photos of the same exact image at different lighting levels and then blend them all together for the perfect picture. And yep. you can tell HDR photography from other pictures because if there's a window in that picture, you can see the stop sign <laughs> across the street. That's how clear it is and that's yeah, how good it is. Sharp. Very, very sharp. And so, you know, that's how you can really maximize um, the interest in the property. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition, I also am a big believer in lifestyle video. Oh, totally. You know, yes. Which can include, uh, you know, talking about the property, showing the property. Um, in drone its, imagery? Yeah, drone photography or drone video, even mm -hmm. better. Uh, and these things all go together because we're not just selling the house as a homeowner or as a realtor, we're not just selling that house. No. We're also selling the lifestyle that it provides. And if it's yep. a luxury home in the hills in Saratoga or in, you know, in Ruby Hills in Pleasanton or Black Hawk in, mm -hmm. in Danville, these are all, that's one end of the spectrum, but also just your, your single family neighborhood in Blossom Valley of San Jose has a lifestyle associated with it. There's mm -hmm. parks that are nearby, there's shopping that's nearby, and there's, there's family oriented uh, amenities that might be nearby. Yep. And so those should be highlighted, the schools. The schools, yep. Did libraries. I the schools? <laughs> the schools and the libraries are very, very important. And those should be highlighted in, in some way, and I think video is the best way. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can really talk to the, to the potential buyer, you know, not only about the house, but also about the surrounding area. And in our area, you know, there's so many tech jobs here, you gotta talk about that too. You gotta talk about yeah. the, the draw to, um, to those tech jobs and how close the house might be to certain ones because these companies they're really the, the driving force and the lifeblood of our economy. They are indeed, and no one wants a long commute. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the long commute thing has become more and more of a, a, a <laughs> hot button issue. And, and yeah, the closer you are to these companies, the more valuable your house is. And therefore, you know, emphasizing that on the video, pointing that out is mm -hmm. going to be very, very important. So once you have your house prepared, mm -hmm. once you have the presentation materials, your video, your photography, which then translates into higher quality brochures. Yep. It translates into basically a media package. Mm -hmm. And that media package then can be promoted, which is our third P. Mm -hmm. So the promotion uh, is also incredibly important because we can have all these tools and if it's not getting out and proliferated out there to the right yeah. people, then they're not seeing it. So who, what does it matter, right? Yeah. The value is gone. <laughs> the value is gone if you don't show it to anybody, right? So as far as promotion is, is concerned, you know, the very number one most important is obviously listing a home on the multiple listing service. It's the most powerful tool that real estate agents have. Mm -hmm. Some homeowners uh, want to opt out of hiring a real estate agent. They, wanna, they want to sell their house perhaps on Zillow or on a for sale by owner website. Mm -hmm. And what they're doing is they're eliminating the multiple listing service, which is where I would say 90 or more percent of buyers are looking. Yep. They may not be directly looking at the MLS multiple listing service, but they're looking at sites that get feeds from that. Mm -hmm. So your Redfins, your Trulia's, your Zillow's, Hotpads, and all these other websites, yep. they get, even the, the real estate companies, Coldwell Banker, and Tarot, et cetera, mm -hmm. even their websites are MLS driven. So you can see how the MLS is the most important because it feeds all the rest of them. That's right. So it's really important that the home is listed on the MLS, mm -hmm. um, which also should be a no-brainer. If you hire a real estate agent and they tell you they're not gonna put it on the MLS, that's not <laughs> um, And that's actually a topic in and of itself that we yeah. can do a whole show on. So exactly. we'll, we won't touch on that too much, but it's very important that you go on the multiple listing service if you're trying to get top dollar. Yeah, you wanna make your house famous. <laughs> you, you wanna make your house famous, exactly. So in addition to that, there's so many other things that a real estate agent can do for you or you can do for yourself. Uh, one of the things that I've taken to recently is just really promoting things on Facebook, Instagram, and mm -hmm. Twitter. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I do that is because I've found that, you know, that is one of the places where our consumer's attention is now, you know? Yep. And when they're, 
when they're watching television like they're like they're doing tonight, uh, um, you know, there's commercials and then you know there's the timing in between you know the content of the show mm -hmm. and yes you're watching those but you're also half watching them while maybe you're checking Facebook especially the younger generation and so being able to promote homes on that platform is very very important and actually it actually provides you know a, a promotion company like ours the ability to target certain people certain demographics with certain interests mm -hmm. that would lead that would lead them to want to buy a home in your area mm -hmm. so you can actually target your marketing specifically to the right people mm -hmm. and i found that it, it has increased the number of of uh, guests at our open houses significantly especially over the last year and so those are those are very very important and that's really where that video comes in because that's what people would want to watch is that mm -hmm. that lifestyle video um, and also having having a virtual tour where they can scroll through the pictures at their leisure, mm -hmm. kind of having both tools available. Uh, yep. There's other there's many other websites that that need to be uh, accounted for in the marketing plan of a real estate agent for your home. I think there's there's a couple that I'd like to just really just hit on one, which is Jawai.com. Mm -hmm. Jawai.com is a it's kind of like the Zillow of of Asia. And mm -hmm. it translates into something like 15 languages, um, and it proliferates out to, I, I, I'm not sure how many users, but it's definitely in the tens of millions. Mm -hmm. And that's a place where homes get sold as well, because again, there's so much uh, opportunity here in the Silicon Valley. People coming here, um, they may not be looking at Redfin, Zillow, or Trulia. They may not be looking at the multiple listing service. Mm -hmm. They may be using their tool. So it's important that something like Jawai Dot com and other similar uh, avenues are also explored by the real estate agent or the or the homeowner. So that promotion is really really important, and it all sort of circles back to the idea, mm -hmm. which I which I brought up before, is that everyone's coming from everywhere. So we need to be everywhere in yep. order to really maximize that exposure. And by maximizing that exposure, again, you increase the traffic, which creates that level of competition in the buyer's mm -hmm. minds. And then as a result, that competition drives up the price. So those are the three P's of getting top dollar for your home. And, and I think if you hit on every single one, you'll be very satisfied with the results. Right. And, and you know, it's, it's important also to say that you know, not every homeowner can do all of these things, right? You know, there may be budgetary concerns. There may mm -hmm. be timing concerns. They may need to sell more quickly. Or they may not just have the physical capacity to do all this. Now, of course, there's going to be agents and and um, and services that can help those people if, if mm -hmm. they desire. But also, if maybe avoiding pain and making it yeah. as easy as possible is what you want to do as well. There's definitely toned down versions of all of this that, yeah. that one can do. But I think the takeaway is that eliminating distractions. If yeah. you eliminate distractions from the from the buyer's mind, you will have already won half the battle for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, the fourth P uh, is is sort of like its own thing, and that's why I call it the three P's and there's still the fourth P, <laughs> because there's actually the most important thing that you can do when selling your home is making sure that the pricing that you decide, mm -hmm. meaning the list price on the home, is accurate. Uh, and not just accurate for the market value, but perhaps accurate for the trends in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I bring that up at, at the end, and it's its own thing because Pricing is the one thing that makes it all go or makes it all not go. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can do absolutely everything right in the preparation phase. You can present your house the most beautiful way possible mm -hmm. that no one can make one single complaint on it. And it can pre be promoted under every rock on earth, yeah. right? And if you price it wrong, it's not going to sell. Or if it does sell, it's not going to sell for the highest price. And I'll tell you, it's an interesting thing because it matters where specifically your home is located. Mm -hmm. Every neighborhood has its own pricing trends that need to be accounted for. Yep. You know, uh, a, a perfect example is you're not going to have the same pricing strategy in Gilroy, for example, mm -hmm. as you're going to have in downtown San Jose or Willow Glen or in Los Altos um, or in the Central Valley. There's going to be totally different pricing trends than mm -hmm. there are going to be in the East Bay. And so it's very, very neighborhood specific. And I'll give you a, a perfect example. Mm -hmm. So right now, I would say that it is, it is very appropriate in Santa Clara or Sunnyvale to price your home $200,000, $300,000 or $400,000 <laughs> under market. Yeah. Meaning if there are other homes in your neighborhood selling for $1.9 million, it mm -hmm. is 
po quite possibly appropriate and the best thing to do to list your house at 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, in Gilroy or in Morgan Hill, for example, if you listed your house even $100,000 under market or $50,000 under market, it would be the, the wrong move. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really specific. You need to see what the trends are. And the reason that I bring that up is because those trends are based on what buyers' expectations are. So in those cases where houses are typically selling for two, three, or four hundred thousand dollars over asking price, mm -hmm. what happens is that buyers actually get used to that. Mm -hmm. In fact, they expect it. In which case, you have to play into their expectations, unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it. So, if you were to price it right at market value, a couple of things can happen. They could see it. They could mm -hmm. be searching their Zillow app or their Redfin app. They could see it on the market. And they could say, oh, they want 1.9 for this house. That means they want 2.3. Yeah. And therefore, <laughs> they're crazy. <Yeah. laughs> so they're not going to make an offer. They may show up to the open houses, but mm -hmm. they probably won't make an offer because their expectation is that the seller's crazy. That's yeah. one thing that can happen. Another thing is that they're so used to paying wildly over mm -hmm. that they may cut their automatic searches off at, at a certain price at point. At a certain price point, yeah. exactly. And what will end up happening is that your house is very affordable, it's in their price range, it's the perfect house for them and they don't see it because mm -hmm. it got cut off in their search criteria on their, um, on their automatic internet searches. Mm -hmm. And so it's super important that you follow those trends. An example of this, I had a home that was listed for, um, based on the seller doing the opposite of what I asked them to do, <laughs> right? Their house was worth $1.4 million, and this was actually this week. So the house was worth $1.4 million on the money. I, you know, there was similar homes that mm -hmm. it sold, cookie cutter type houses, similar mm -hmm. condition, many of them that it sold between 135 and 145, and it was just very, very obvious it was worth 1.4, so we priced it at 1.4, the seller disagreed with what I'm saying. <laughs> and uh, as a result, in this crazy wild hot market, we got one offer. And in my opinion, they were lucky to have it. Wow. Because the buyer's expectations that came to that open house was that the seller wanted one six mm -hmm. or one seven, and therefore they didn't, they didn't think they it was bid. really a, a worthy cause for them to write an offer on. Had that home been priced at 999 mm -hmm. or a million 99 or even a million 299, they probably would have got six, eight, or 10 offers. Yeah. And ultimately, in that case, you know, they lucked out. They, they probably did get what it's worth, they sold mm -hmm. it for approximately the price that we thought it would. Um, however, um, they may have gotten more in that multiple offer situation mm -hmm. because then they would have created leverage where they could actually have negotiated higher with, the, with those buyers. Mm -hmm. So they may have lost out on a little bit of money by not listening. I even had you know, one other situation where mm -hmm. I had a seller that was priced right at market value. This was a home in Willow Glen in San Jose. Mm -hmm. And they had it on the market for 23 days when homes were selling for uh, for over asking in about eight mm -hmm. on average. And so after the 23rd day, they agreed to finally lower the price to 10% below market, as I had suggested. And literally within 20 minutes, we had an offer on their house that was higher than their original list wow. price. And it was from somebody that came to the first open house 23 days ago. So oh my gosh. that just goes to show you that you really do have to definitely be within the buyer's expectations of what the market value should be. And that, that also goes kind of the other way. Mm -hmm. If buyer's expectation is to pay slightly under the list price, then you need to be slightly over market value in order to play, to play the game mm -hmm. the way that the buyers want you to, or rather, not the way that the buyers want you to, it's the way the buyers are used to dealing. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you gotta be in the same category. Some, some neighborhoods, they sell in two weeks, right at asking price very, mm -hmm. very commonly. Others sell slightly under asking price, and obviously others sell wildly over asking price. And it's very yeah. important to sort of <laughs> you know, make sure that you know where, where you're at with that. So mm -hmm. hopefully this was uh, an opportunity for the viewers here from AMB to get some education on how to get top dollar for your sale uh, of your home. As I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about a lot of topics here on Real Estate with Rusty, and I look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs>